Wait, a new Steam Deck news video already? But I just did one last Friday. I guess that's just how busy this weekend has been for Steam Deck news. From HDR progress to a brand new Proton Experimental and beta client update to an unannounced feature that could change the way you use your Steam Deck. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time on a Monday. Since my previous video on Friday, we've continued to see Steam Deck point man Pierre Lugrefay excitedly tweeting about his experimentation with Linux's nascent HDR output. HDR video has been a long time coming too. While Windows has supported true HDR video output for years, Linux has lagged behind. But now, thanks to the work of open source engineer Josh Ashton, Linux now has true HDR output for games. In Pierre Lu's latest tweet about this subject, he has managed to get HDR output from a Steam Deck through HDMI on a current gen OLED TV. What's truly heartening about this is that it looks like it's the same model of TV that I have, so it's pretty nice to see that for me. When will HDR output land on the Steam Deck? Well, Pierre Lu said, quote, HDR working on a docked deck connected to a current gen LG OLED through HDMI. Again, still needs a ton of work, but making good progress. So it may be a ways out, but who really knows at this point? An update like this would definitely require a SteamOS upgrade, and those usually are done quarterly. So I would guess maybe spring or summer this year would probably be the earliest we'll see HDR on the Steam Deck. I'd like to know what you think. Are you excited about HDR? Let me know in the comments. Okay, this is an exciting one, guys. I'm gonna circle back to a story we've been covering since October when Pavel Jundik, the creator of the incredibly useful SteamDB site, did a little bit of digging into Steam's code. He found strings that seemed to indicate Valve was working on a peer-to-peer -peer download system. Text like use LZMA for LAN downloads, LZMA being a compression algorithm, and peer content server. Well, Pavel tweeted out that he's uncovered more to this story on Friday morning, stating, quote, Last Steam update added some strings for this. This feature allows your PC to transfer game files to and from other PCs or Steam Decks on your local network. Reducing your internet traffic while downloading or updating a game can limit to own devices, friends, or any user. Now, essentially, this would mean that you would be able to download games to your PC from Steam itself, and then if you want to download that same game later on your Steam Deck, you'd just get a copy of it from your PC rather than downloading it from Steam, and it would all be done automatically. Now, this is huge as it would solve a ton of issues. Not only would this feature be incredibly useful for anyone who has multiple PCs in their household or people who like to play games across their PC and their Steam Deck, but it would also allow people who have a Steam Deck to go somewhere with faster internet or maybe a connection with no data cap, download the game and then come home and have their PC automatically download the game from their Steam Deck. That's huge, that's fantastic. Now, if this feature should hit the Steam Deck, I can't wait to see it especially with my new mystery build coming soon. So make sure you get subscribed so that you don't miss that. <laughs> and speaking of, before we move on, I gotta ask you a question. Why haven't you liked that smash button yet? It's what all the cool kids are doing. When you hit that like button, it puts you well on your way to seeing more videos just like this one. You can also get subscribed to stay up to date with all the cool stuff we're doing here if that's more your speed. I post new videos at least twice a week talking about, you guessed it, Steam Deck news and Linux gaming. And while you're here, my girlfriend and I are also streaming every Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern on our second channel, Gardner Bryant Live. There's a link up here. We'd love it if you come and hang out with us. Okay, that's enough of that. Now back to the news. There's a new build of Proton Experimental and it was released on January 6th with a host of new features. First, DirectX 9, 10, 11, and 12 games now all require Mesa 22 or Nvidia 510.47 drivers or newer. This is due to a change in Vulkan shipping with these drivers. Now there are six more games that are officially supported with Proton Experimental, most significantly The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. These changes include NVAPI, which means DLSS and other features on Nvidia graphics cards are now accessible. This includes many applications like A Plague Tale Requiem, Cyberpunk 2077, Death Stranding, Death Loop, Red Dead Redemption 2, and many, many others. This Proton Experimental build also allows Halo Infinite to now get into game, but with some graphical artifacts. There's also a new file distribution method that should save disk space for Proton downloads, which is huge on the Steam Deck's limited uh, internal storage. And there were many other changes and fixes, uh, including performance improvements for multiple games. 
but it's so great to see that Proton continues getting new updates, even though Valve is reportedly on an extended holiday break still. And speaking of things that Valve continues to update over break, a Steam Deck beta client hit the afternoon I finished my last video. Uh, it includes a number of changes and fixes for the Steam Deck's software, and this time they focused on controller input. Changes include a tweak to the way launch options are displayed to users, and this prevents the user from being pestered with alternate launch options every time they return to a game's details. Now the user should only see this launch option reminder three times. Valve added an option to turn off controllers when exiting big picture mode. They implemented Steam controller dongle pairing. They added controller settings dropdowns to choose when an idle controller will turn off. They added controller support for the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Xbox controller. They added controller settings in app properties for non-Steam games. And then for fixes, they fixed a crash with games when using Windows gaming input. They fixed instances of Steam freezing or crashing in desktop mode. They fixed digital navigation getting stuck on text boxes when using a physical keyboard. And they fixed an issue uh, viewing the hardware survey page after submitting results. Overall, a nice assortment of mostly controller-focused fixes and features. And as a reminder, these were all included in a beta update. Most of these features and fixes should make their way to the monthly stable client update when that hits later this month. Before we close out this video, I've got to mention my website, viewsync.com. If you haven't been there before, I try to get most of these stories out as soon as possible over there. But we also talk about pop culture, gaming, and other stuff that you might be interested in. Check us out at viewsync.com. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to build the show into what it's become today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, you can become a patron or a YouTube member with the links below. It's all greatly appreciated. And thanks. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I'll see you guys next time.